Uh, now you want me to explain a little bit of theory. That incubator, incubado, I think that comes from the tenor. They make such a fuss about tenors, especially high, high notes particularly. So what is the proper way? Well, some teachers say you have to cover the voice. And others don't do it. They open the voice very much. And it's too much. Not good. I feel when they go on the high notes, they open the voice and it kind of, it's overblowing. Especially because I've been listening to recordings where it discrepants is made, established by the singer, on which certain notes, most of the registers, kind of regular, normal, as it should be. And then they go to the high note and gets all creepy weird and opens up out of shape. I am um, more for the unifying thing. Yeah, what does it even mean, right? Not that you could listen to it, but I did listen to the previous video right now. And yes, I can listen to a difference. But you know how long it took me to distinguish opera, opera sounds, operatic sounds. So I do not expect anybody to understand this. Not anybody. Not at all. I'm sharing because I'm asked to share. So what would I do now? I would probably use a different different melody. Or different, yeah, anything. Different uh, sequence of notes as my vocalization continues. I'm thinking what else do we need to talk about in Cubano? All right, so the feedback is that no tenor really understood any of this, <laughs> what their voice would do, and what they could be doing, or any singer for that matter. I'm like the only one. How about, well, I told you I am the row, but I'm meticulous too. Ha, huh. can I just post it without singing, right? Well, what about a tenor aria? Let me think about a tenor aria. But that's not a high note, let me see. Oh, Dolce Bachi, Languida got it too. Sweet kisses. Yeah, well, I'm not going to translate the entire thing. That's a tenor area. It's not that high. I just started it anywhere. I'm not sure if that's the one or not. But I know I'm special because so many different ways I put out the sound right now. That doesn't mean it's not equal balanced. That's not what I'm talking about. Because it's not that I did that, what I talked to you about earlier, the incubator, incubator, and then open up. No, just different sounds to make it very elastic and very interesting. I can do those things. Yeah, that makes me special. I do it on purpose sometimes. For, uh, and I do it natural for a certain area. It depends on the repertoire. It's not that good for bel canto. I know that La Calas, uh, we listened to an interview yesterday about, um, what did she say? Oh yeah, she said something, but it doesn't matter what she said. But she said bel canto. And then she said every opera has to be done like that, or every aria. And bel canto is only a part of the opera. It is not all of it. It is a specific type of vocal emission. Particularly, I feel like bel canto doesn't offer itself to to do much variations. A few, but not many. Because it's supposed to be all smooth in one line. Donizetti, Rossini, Mozart, lighter voices sing bel canto. It's good for uh, all the Bellini. That's an interesting part. No, not that you have to know about that. See, Castadima, that's uh, like one of those areas, cool areas for soprano from Bellini's opera Norma. And Bellini is supposed to be bel canto, but I don't see any bel canto in there. It's a little bit bel canto in the little lines in between. And the voice has to be strong. Strong. 
to sing that aria, so it doesn't really apply for bel canto. A few others too. It's good to me they're cross, cross reference, different styles. Let me see. That's Casta Diva. <clears throat> Distracted. I can't sing it right now. That's what they can do with my brains. Distract me. Oh, I have it in my hand. All right, so here it is. No, it's not. So it's not the time to sing it right now. All right, so I have to compare. My strength is that I can listen to the song in my head without any music outside. or, And I can catch up any phrase anywhere. I can do that. Like, but well, that's not, I'm not vocalized. Is it? No, 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 I'm not vocalized for that right now. To do this, the last phrase. Because it goes very high, and I know I wouldn't just risk, I mean, not that it's dangerous, but I wouldn't just risk to sing extensive phrasings. What is this? Uh, for not even five minutes of vocalization after so long, that would not be the correct way to go. So what can we sing? Well, what do I have to say? See, I don't just talk for talking. I'm not sure is what this is. Because I could tell you what I think and share, but is it important? Does it matter? Let's see, apparently not. Yeah, you just want to hear the voice sing. No, here's a pause. Maybe I'm just gonna not post this one. Ave Maria, I do like it. Well, I don't hate it, but man, I prefer another Ave Maria from another composer. Well, the one you all know is like the Schubert version. Well, there is more than one. But then again, um, there's different chords. Yeah, well, I don't, I haven't really studied it, but maybe in my previous life, but I can feel it, I can hear it. So when they're like major and minor chords, I am have an inclination to minor chords. And this from Schubert is straightforward, so it's easy to just sing it for me, <laughs> not for other people, without any instrumental behind. Yet the other one, I, of course I could sing it, but the whole idea about making it beautiful is the harmony. And for the harmony we need the background. We need to matching instrumental with a voice to make it like presentable, viable. There's another song I was just thinking about repertoire for weddings, right? This is super cool and you don't need such a developed voice to sing it. But then again, one voice alone wouldn't make it. You need like a few, like a choir or so to make the harmony. <coughs> And there we need to, to make it beautiful. Ave verum corpus, so beautiful. 